Jace Tunnel here. Today for beach coming, we're actually up in the bays and we are gonna do something called oyster restoration. And so I'm gonna take you through the process of what this means. So the Heart Research Institute has this program called Sink Your Shucks. Uh, Dr. Jenny Pollock is actually the one that manages this and uh, we had just kicked off. So there's about 200 volunteers here today at Goose Island State Park, which is just north of Rockport. Um, we are actually putting oyster shells from restaurants. So, you know, after you eat oysters, there's a shell left. Uh, instead of just throwing that away into the dump, they actually take that shell and they put it into bags and then put it back out into the bay so that it can create new oysters. So little bitty oysters like to uh, grab on to the old oyster shell. And then from there, crabs, shrimp, uh, fish live all around it. So it's actually creating habitat. And so let's go through the process of what all is involved whenever we're doing oyster restoration. So we're out here today restoring oyster reefs. These are habitats that have been degraded from a lot of things over time and we're out here to, to rebuild these special places. We know that oyster reefs are unique and the organisms that live in them are a unique community of organisms. When the oyster reefs are lost, nothing else takes their place. So this is a really key part of conservation in our area is really to replace that important benefit both for the ecosystem and for the people that depend on it. So we had 16 cubic yards of shell delivered into our pile, which doesn't look like much, but when you look at the weight, that's approximately 10 and a half tons of shell that we're putting in the water right now. This is our 15th year in existence, and we've got thousands of volunteers have helped put in over 40 acres of reef and over 3 million pounds of shell. We start out by going through, there are actually boxes of uh, cotton bags that they're pulling out and cutting it into pieces. Uh, and then that's what the oyster shell is gonna go into. And then there's all these volunteers that are over here that put the bags around one of these PVC tubes and then oyster shell is being placed inside of there to create a bag like this that will actually go out into the bay to create reefs and so they put a whole bunch of these on top of each other to be able to make it uh, to where it's meaningful in size so let's go and I'm going to show you some uh, other close-up shots of how they're getting the shell and putting it into the bag Okay, so this is actually step one of getting all these shells organized. And this is about, this is tons and tons of shells. And so I'm betting that within about two hours, this whole mound will be down to where there's nothing left, all in the bags. And then once these bags are all uh, put up, Oh, they're, they're talking about them right now, what they're going to do. They're going to line them up, and then uh, there are PVC poles out here that are marking where the uh, oyster shells will go. And you can see what's behind here. There's a bunch of marsh grass that's all behind here. And you see the waves that are coming in? When it gets windy, it can be really rough. And so uh, what happens when they put this oyster shell out is it's not only good for the the animals living, the, you know, the actual oysters or the animals living around it, but also for that habitat behind it. So it will protect this from eroding away. And this is important for, you, know, you can see the, the floating, or not the floating, but the emerging marsh back behind there. That stuff 
could easily be eroded out. So it's important to protect that for uh, shrimp, crabs, uh, and other organisms that use this as a nursery ground. So creating this habitat is super important. Um, and so I'm just going to show some video throughout here to be able to um, uh, show y'all you know, what it's all about and the meaning of it. Um, here at Goose Island, we have a lot of community engagement. Um, we are on the northern end of Rockport in a community called Lamar, on the Lamar Peninsula. Um, close to probably 500 people out here. So we see a lot of the same people. Um, so it's really important to engage them and get them to care about our state park. Um, you might notice behind me, there's a lot of urban development coming up. Um, so by having these little areas of oyster reefs, that's going to protect this entire bay. It's just wonderful to have the Heart Research Institute out here, Sink Your Shucks, providing us with a brand new oyster reef. Hello, my name is Jackie. I'm here with Valero Volunteers, and today we are at the event called Sink Your Shucks and is a great program. I think you should really look into it. It's really fun. Ever since we've gotten here, it's a really good event for a really good cause. So another good thing about this uh, Sink Your Shucks event is that they have educational booths to tell you all about the different animals that are living within here, uh, the benefit to water quality that the oysters have. So let's just go along and look at some of these. Hi, welcome to the Shoreline Protection Station. So we're trying to kind of let people know that not only do oysters help boost the water quality and make uh, more habitats and ecosystems for critters, but also they help prevent uh, shoreline erosion and help boost the physicality of our coastlines themselves. So we have a shoreline uh, tank here, basically trying to simulate what uh, these coastlines look like with the wave tank. So you can see whenever we start moving it around, you can see on this side, erosion is a lot more rampant rather than this side with the actual oyster reefs themselves, how this is acting as a, as a natural sandbag pretty much and uh, acting as a buffer for wave energy and kind of uh, providing some support with the substrate. So this is our habitat booth. We actually collected all of this from right over there where we're gonna be restoring um, the reef. And we have a couple different containers with some different animals. So this one is a bunch of different species of shrimp, mainly grass shrimp, but we also have a snapping shrimp and some arrow shrimp, uh, and arrow shrimp on there. And then we have a bunch of crabs that are all hiding under the oyster shells here, mainly mud crabs and porcelain crabs. And then in this one, we got some fish, some pinfish, some goby, some skillet fish, a pipe fish, which is pretty cool. And then this flat, large container is just kind of a big overview of what you'd see in an oyster reef if the water was completely clear. Um, a big combination of everything, shrimp, algae, oysters, and yeah, so just kind of explaining why oysters are alive, but also serve as a very important habitat here in Goose Island. So over here, we're talking about water quality benefits of oyster reefs. And so you can see here in this tank, we have some live oysters and some live oyster mounds and some bay water. And on this tank over here, we just have bay water with no oysters in it. And so you can see in this, in just about two and a half hours, the oysters have actually been filtering actively and are cleaning the water and taking out all the nutrients and the phytoplankton and algae out of the water and taking water that looks like this green color to this clear color and that's really really good for all of the animals that live on oyster reefs so at the end of the event all the stuff's got to be taken down um, we have this big metal box that uh, we're able to put all the PVC pipes in, all the shovels, buckets and everything, because there's an event coming up next week and that's gonna do this all over again. And so it's an opportunity for more community members to come out and try to protect the habitat. So uh, with that, that's it for this week's episode of Beach Coming. We'll see you next week, bye.